too often we allow too much time to pass by before we really figure out and get to the root of why we're dating and what our intentions are. And that begs the question, why do I need to have the define the relationship conversation? And why is that important? Who should start the conversation? And what exactly does that conversation look like? I think it is vital to have that conversation and we'll get into it, but there are many issues with people who don't have the conversation and they generally regret it because they get six months, a year, two years down the road and they still don't know where are we going? What is this? So when we talk about why it's important, There are a couple of reasons, and I think the first and the most important reason is actually internal. You need to frame why you want to be in this relationship. You need to express why you want to be with this person and where you think you're going. And sometimes forcing yourself to have that conversation takes all the thoughts that are jumbled in your head and then allows you to express them and affirm what you really believe. So if you are not able to figure out why you want to be in this relationship and whether or not you can see a future with them, then the relationship is probably needs to stop. That's the unfortunate backside of having this conversation, but it's an important um, negative because really that's cutting off a lot of the the emotional turmoil that comes with being in a relationship. And you don't want to prolong that because you don't want to answer the question. Mm. Yeah, we definitely put off that question far too long because we just don't want to face it. A lot of times, like we've talked about on this podcast, you it's easier to not deal with it because you know what the answer is. You know deep down and you don't go to God with it because you know you can prove he's telling you to walk away but sometimes we do have to face that reality yeah and then it's really important for you to understand what the other person is thinking and feeling when it comes to what you are as a relationship the goal for dating and we've said this many times is to evaluate the other person and evaluate them for marriage i think it is completely fine if you are in the early stages of dating to say i don't even know that I want to be married, but I'm kind of trying dating to see if maybe there's some sparks, maybe there's some things that I pick up, that's okay. But when when you are getting four or five, six dates in and you still don't have an idea, that can be a problem. And so from the other person's perspective, you are, you are delivering clarity to the relationship by having this conversation, but they're also returning clarity to you. You don't want to invest in a relationship that is haphazard on the other side. You want to pour into a relationship where you know the other person wants to be there just as much as you do. So when we have our define the relationship conversation, we are establishing clarity and we're also talking about where we want to go. There are many different ways to take a relationship and it's, it always depends on your stage in life. Mm -hmm. But typically when we're talking about a Christian perspective, we are dating for marriage and we are evaluating the other person for marriage. And I think it's important to understand whether the other person believes that marriage is in their future and if it's in the near or distant future. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Also, this conversation is important, just bringing it back to the fact that it honors your, if you're both believers, it honors your brother or sister in Christ by not wasting their time and ultimately not wasting yours. And that's how God pursues us. Like it's a very intentional pursuit and he doesn't give up on us. So you should not just waste that time because if we're to reflect and be image bearers of God, then, you know, he pursues us wholeheartedly. He's all in. So that's how we need to be. And if we're, we're not there, then that is 
not helping our brother or sister in Christ and not helping in our life either. And just to put scripture behind it, Proverbs 21, 5 says, or I'm sorry, James 4, 17 says, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So mm. if you, this conversation is really pivotal because it's going to help you determine, first of all, looking internally, like you said, and deciding what your motives are and, and are you in this for the long haul and where are you at? And then once you've decided that, you bring this information that you've gathered in yourself to the other person and see where they're at. If you're not aligning in any way, then the best thing to do is to walk away. The right thing to do is to mm -hmm. walk away. And if you don't and you let it go on for selfish, sinful reasons, then for you, that is sin. The Bible's very clear on that. So definitely want to set set this relationship up or the start of it or not correctly and biblically. Right. It's important to build a foundation. One question that I think most people have when it comes to this conversation is who's supposed to do this? Because there are many people who wait around for the other person to take the reins and do this this to find the relationship conversation. If you're a man, you're waiting for the woman to affirm that she is really there and intentional about the relationship. If you're a woman, you're waiting for the man to take the lead. So who should be the one to initiate this relationship? We, in just talking about this, we decided that really either of you could do it. Um, this is not one of those things where because they're the man they have to lead or because they're the woman and they're mo more emotionally invested than I I'm waiting for her to, you know, initiate that conversation. Really, either of you could do it. Um, you don't have to wait on the other person. I would say as a woman, it, it could potentially be a red flag if you're several months into the relationship and you're, significant other seems to be dragging his feet and doesn't want to commit or define the relationship or say what this is for whatever reason, um, that could potentially be a red flag. It also could not, but I think this is one of those things where it's not necessarily on the man. So if you really feel the conviction on your heart that we need to sit down and kind of see where we're at with things, then by all means, I think the woman can absolutely do that in the relationship. Yeah. This is too important of a conversation for you to wait around. Um, so what does it mean to wait around? Well, I think the appropriate timing for this can vary, but it needs to happen when you have started to establish that this person is someone worth pursuing. Um, so we've talked about um, in using uh, Pastor Ben Stewart's framework with character and chemistry. The first part is establishing their character and, and understanding who do they serve? You know, do they serve God, the same God that, that you're serving? Um, who do they believe Jesus is? What do they believe Jesus did for them and how, how does he view them? And do they live out what they speak about. You should be able to observe this person over a little bit of time so that you can understand that because anyone can smooth talk you in a date, mm -hmm. right? But it's important for us to see them in action. So um, we did a, a podcast a couple of weeks ago on great date ideas for dating couples. And I encourage you to check that out. What we are trying to promote when we talk about that is an activity that allows you to get to know them better and allows you to see a different side of them so that you can evaluate. And I think that between eight to 10 hours spent with that person of intentional time, not just in proximity in a group or something, eight to 10 hours is a good amount of time to be able to discern whether or not this person is worth pursuing. That doesn't mean you have to marry them. <laughs> um, one of the, the biggest fears um, that I especially had approaching this conversation is what if I'm coming on too strong and I'm stating my intentions and the other person 
get scared and they think, oh, no, they, they want to marry me. They want to get married right away. It's important for you to, to share how you're feeling and where you want to go. But just know this does not mean you are committed. It just means you're committing to pursuing this. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're driving at. It's, it's the commitment of your heart to pursuing this relationship because you don't want to waste your time. The other person doesn't want to waste their time. And you want to make sure that every time you're with that person, you're, you're understanding who they are better. You're able to pour into them and eventually decide whether or not they're the right person for marriage. Yeah. I definitely think that it depends on your vulnerability level. So like Nicholas said, I mean that, would you say five to eight hours? Eight to 10 hours. Oh, eight to 10. So You know, that's like four dates ish, four or five dates that are two hours long. Like you're going to have a lot of conversations within those dates, even if one may be an activity, maybe the other is dinner. Like, you know, so you're going to have some hopefully good intentional conversations that allow you both to open up and be more vulnerable with each other to get to know each other better. So, one thing that I think about is comfortability. (laughs) It does not equal vulnerability. Hmm. So for example, Nicholas, when he initiated the conversation with us, first of all, it did come on kind of strong. It kind of freaked me out, but it freaked me out more, I think, because I had the same thoughts. So it was good that he brought that up because again, we were able to get on the same page and I didn't have to be the one to freak you out. (laughs) So it worked out. But when he brought up the conversation, we, that was one of our, maybe our fourth or fifth date. So we were not like super far into this thing just yet. And some of you that may be like, whoa, so early, like no way. But we, we were a little bit older ish and didn't want to just like hang out and have fun and just waste time. So It was pretty early on for us, I would say. And I was not necessarily 100% comfortable with Nicholas at the time. I was still kind of nervous around him and thought he was cute, like had this little girl crush on him. But we had been vulnerable and had had really good conversations. So I I felt somewhat vulnerable with him, even though I wasn't 100% comfortable with him just yet. So, you know, take that how you will, but just know like you can still be vulnerable with someone and not feel like you've known them your whole entire life. But Mm. that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, that you should put off this conversation because you definitely should not. That's a great point. You don't have to be locked in and I'm ready to commit to years with you. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think the, the depth of your conversations matters. If I spend eight to 10 hours and we're just talking about where we like to eat and maybe places we've gone in the past, um, that's not, that's not enough. And you need to, to do a little bit of work to dig deeper. Yeah. Or like group hangouts. Like if you're all going out or all going to dinner, that is not going to be especially conducive for these good conversations to really get to know one another. Yes. It's good to see each other and all these different facets and different environments and with other people, but that's not always going to be the best way to open up these conversations to really get to know each other. Right. When we are vulnerable and just dig a little bit below the surface, we start to open up and we can see more of that person's heart. They see more of our heart. So those conversations are important in preparation to this, but this is not something that you need to be completely ready for a long dating relationship to have the conversation. You can have it. And two weeks later, you realize, you know what? I've thought about it more. We've done a couple more things and just doesn't feel like it's working out. You can still do that. You're not locked in. But, um, you know, when you're, when you're sitting down to have this conversation, you are putting your feelings aside and you are trying to steer the relationship in a way that is life giving and doesn't leave them in the dark. So when we talk about actually having the conversation what do we say? What do we say to be able to steer 
us in the right direction and actually get them to give a legitimate response. You may be worried about them just agreeing with you blindly. So how do you get them to have a, a real response that allows us both to be on the same page? I think it really comes from giving clear thoughts and direction from your heart and being able to lay out what you see in the relationship. Um, I think it's important to point to a couple of things that you really admire about them uh, and, and reasons why you think they are a great um, person for pursuing and, and, and dating relationship, but always leave them a door so that they can step out of the relationship. Um, usually when people run into trouble is they express all these thoughts, but they come on so strong that the other person feels obligated to just agree because there's no way out. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to be able to leave yeah. some room for them in case they don't feel that way. What do you think? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Because like you were saying earlier, if they potentially are not the greatest person in the world, then they could just kind of like go along with what you're saying because of their own selfish motives and, well, no, I'm still having fun. I'm not done with this. So I'll just tell her what she wants to hear. I'll just tell him what he wants to hear just to keep going on more dates. As believing women, I think it's important that we be very truthful and prayerful and sharing our intentions. Like just because the man is leading this or supposed to be leading this doesn't mean that we just get to sit in the back seat and enjoy the ride and let him put in all the work. Um as believers, we're called to lead pure lives, to purify our hearts and pursue righteousness. So this means we must also strive for pure intentions in our relationships. And mm. that is, again, another way to honor the man that you're dating. Um, and so if you you really need to do a heart check and and think before you bring this conversation up to the other person, check yourself, like ask yourself the hard questions. Am I just in this for the fun, for the convenience, for the status, hmm. for to fill my loneliness, to indulge in immorality? You know, like mm -hmm. really ask yourself these tough questions. Get to the root of why you're dating this person and what your intentions are with this person. And then just be honest and present that to them and, and be wholehearted in your responses and be open and honest um, and it, you know, that can open up the door for them to reciprocate if you really are being super vulnerable. Yeah. And they may say they're not interested. And that's one of the hardest parts about this conversation. It's not easy when you lay it on the line, you say, I want to commit to this. And then you sense the hesitation from them and you have to deal with the fact that you've allowed them this opportunity to basically break up with you. Um, it, it makes it hard and you don't want to have the conversation, especially if like Victoria said, you're checking your heart and you know, you're not there for the right reasons. Um, it, it becomes very difficult to face the reality of not dating that person anymore. R the reason we want to make this an earlier conversation is because over time, you will pour more of your emotional attachment into the relationship. And if it's not headed in a clear direction, it, you know, you could be going in complete opposite directions. But the longer that you wait, the bigger the storm is that's brewing that's going to come when you actually have the conversation. So don't do that to yourself. Allow them a door out to say, hey, I, I'm sorry, I don't see marriage in my future my near future or, you know, it's been really fun getting to date you, but I just don't know if I'm there yet. Mm -hmm. That's, that's okay. Because what that does for you, even though there's some temporary pain, it gives you clarity that then you can come to terms with that. You can continue to trust God with your future spouse and you can move on and you can find the next person that you may feel inclined to or or strongly that you should date and and knowing that god will open the right doors 
And if you allow him to, he will close the wrong ones. So many people don't let him close the doors. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the greatest ways that he shows us where our footsteps need to go. Yeah, that's a really good point. We're always waiting for God to open up the doors when we're not seeing that he's trying to close the ones that we're trying to walk through. Right. Um, And one thing that we would just want to drive home at the end of this conversation is just that if it doesn't work out the way that you planned it to, that you wanted it to, that you desired so badly for it to work out that way, just know that your worth is not found in that relationship. Your worth is not found in what that person thinks of you or thinks you don't have. Your worth is found in Christ and your identity is in Him. So no relationship is going to take that away and no relationship is going to satisfy you in that way. So keep holding on to Jesus, keep Him at the center of your life and He will guide and direct you.